The Judgment is the latest chapter in a saga that has been eight years in the making. Throughout this long time, the Workers' Party has consistently and repeatedly refused to take responsibility for the problems in its town council. This is lamentable. The Workers' Party's town councillor have persistently resisted disclosure, offered countless excuses, and made a litany of misleading statements to the public, in Parliament, and before the courts. They have not been transparent in their dealings. In essence, what happened is simple. The Workers' Party wanted their friends to manage the town council. The honest and honourable thing to do if one wants to appoint one's friends is be transparent and open about it. Disclose all the facts so that a fair decision can be made. And call an open tender so that your friends compete with the market. And this is important. You cannot allow your friends to overcharge. What the Workers' Party did was the opposite. They told untruths and manipulated the circumstances so that FMSS would be appointed, whatever the case. They did not care whether FMSS was the best candidate to serve residents. Indeed, Mr. Lau said that he would have appointed FMSS even if a cheaper, more experienced contractor had put in a bid. To guarantee FMSS appointment, Ms. Sylvia Lim and Mr. Lau Tia Kiang waived the tender, even though the law required it. They misled their own town councillors, including their own fellow MPs in the GRC, and gave a false reason for them for not calling a tender. And they removed the existing managing agents and appointed their friends in FMSS, though FMSS had less experience and charged more. This overcharging abuse of public funds was inexcusable. What they did was in breach of their fiduciary duties. At every turn, they told untruths and distorted the facts, and knowingly sacrificed their residents' interests in favour of their friends. After having misled their own town councillors to get FMSS appointed without a tender, they then repeatedly misled the public and parliament on why they had hired their friends in this manner. They misled their own auditors too and refused to give them documents which would have revealed the truth. Mr. Speaker, they did all this to cover up their wrongdoing. It is a tale of deception spun out over eight years, which finally unraveled in court, and not just in one court. It unraveled in three different courts, including the Court of Appeal. The residents have suffered. <clears throat> Under the management of the Workers' Party's friends, the town council ran up deficits a surplus of $3.3 million under the previous management became a deficit of $2 million by the third year of the new regime. And meanwhile, their friends made big profits, running into millions of dollars. Allowing your friends to help themselves to public funds, that is a tale that belongs to the third world, not Singapore. In two different trials, the courts reached judgments that show that the Workers' Party MPs have misled Parliament. First, in 2015, and now, in the latest judgment. Even so, the Workers' Party maintains that they are not answerable either to the courts or to Parliament. Indeed, <clears throat> they have taken the position in court that as elected MPs, they are not answerable to the courts for any serious mismanagement or misspending of public funds. Both the High Court and the Court of Appeal disagreed with this submission, which sought to place the Workers' Party MPs above the law. It, is, it was a remarkable position for the Workers' Party to take. 
they are saying that no matter what wrongs they commit, and no matter how much public funds are misused, they are not answerable, and nothing can be done to them in court. This was said in the hope that the electorate would not pay attention to their wrongdoings. Therefore, everything could be covered up and forgotten.